Yes, and my friend uh, Todd, brother Todd over here on the front row on the side, he was one of my roommates when we were in Bible school. So it's always fun to come back and to see, you know, folks who we haven't seen in a while and really to experience the presence of God in this house. Uh, because so many times, even when I was young, in my early 20s, the presence of God would move here. And we were deeply touched by the Holy Spirit, deeply touched uh, by the ministry of this church and the Bible school. And my favorite class was Dr. Crandall's class. My favorite class on kings, went through all the kings, and it, was, it, was, it really was very impactful. His life stories and everything that you sowed into myself and all of the Bible school students went from this place around the world. I mean, think about the impact of that, of just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of, of young people being raised up in the ministry and then sent out around the world. So um, thank God for the legacy of this house. You guys are blessed. I said, you guys are blessed. You guys are blessed, blessed, blessed uh, with not just a really rich, rich history and legacy, but even the presence of the Lord that is here right now. Thank God for, thank God that he is in the house. Thank God that, that God is in the house and the presence of God is here. And uh, so I send greetings as well from my wife, Stephanie, and my two baby boys, Braden and Braden and Noah, they are two and three. They send their prayers. They don't know it, but they send their prayers because mama's praying with them. When I'm when dad's when dad's preaching, they're praying at home, praying for God to bless all the people and God to touch people. So um, I think, you know, for me, we've we've been in full time ministry now 25 years, I guess. I don't know, 20 years, 25 years. And I think my greatest joy so far has been simply being a dad and being able to have these children and, and just pour love into them and pour Jesus into them and, and, and just have a family. So, but we have, we have seen over the years God move in very mighty ways. We've, we've had the honor uh, to lift the name of Jesus up and to see Jesus heal people and set people free. And I know that Jesus is a healing God, that he still heals today, that he is still transforming lives today. He's delivering people and setting them free and transforming all of us from the inside out. So we're here today to really celebrate all that Jesus has done for us. And how many, you know, even, even as you're in church today, how many are just hungry for more? You say, God, I want more of you in my life. I want more of your presence, more of your power, more of your love, more of your Holy Spirit, not just in me, but in my family, in my kids, in my home, in my marriage. You want God to permeate every part of your life. You know, that's, that's one thing that's really amazing. When you invite God in, he will take residence in every area of your life. Spirit, soul, body, and mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I tell you, God is in the total makeover business. You know, he... When he touches your life, he will change you from the inside out. He will heal your soul. He will take every broken area and make it whole. He will transform your mind. He will heal your body. He will give you resurrection life. Resurrection life. Not just resurrection life to be saved, but resurrection life to be free. Resurrection life to... Be victorious over sin, victorious over the enemy, victorious over the world, victorious over sickness. So I'm here to declare to you today, you've got the victory in Jesus. You've got power in Jesus. You have authority in Jesus to rule and reign and trample over every work of the enemy so that he has no place or power at all in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah resurrection life is one of my favorite scriptures jesus said i've come to give you life and life more abundantly until it overflows and there is that place in god where all of us can experience the overflowing presence of god the overflowing life of god abundant life what is abundant life abundant life is joy it's righteousness it's peace it's provision, it's healing, it's freedom, it's forgiveness. It's, it's walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's abundant life. That's abundant life. So if the enemy ever tries to discourage you or bring you down, you got to get up, you got to shake it off, and you got to say, no, I have abundant life in Jesus. 
I have abundant life in Jesus. I might not be able to see how this thing is going to work for good in my life, but I know God is working all things for good in my life because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. And I tell you what, God has the final say in your life. God has the final say for your children. God has the final say for your family. God has the final say for you. He has the final say, not the enemy. God does. Oh, hallelujah. So I believe today God's going to give us supernatural faith to face the days that we're living in. That even as there's great darkness, the light of God is going to shine in the church. The prophets of old prophesied that the light of God, the glory of God would arise and shine upon us. Oh, hallelujah. So we're not going down, we're going up. Things may be going crazy in the world, but God is going to shine brightly in the church and we are going to see the kingdom of God come in power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I have some scriptures in my heart today that I want to minister and share. Before I jump into that, uh, let me just say, after service, I am going to be out in the foyer because we love to say hi to people. We love to greet people. And we also have resources. I love to equip people and train them in the power of God to live in the glory of God, live in the power of the Holy Spirit, and really experience the divine call that God has for each one of you. So we put a lot of teaching resources together for you. Uh, we just published a new book by Whitaker House. It's called God's Unstoppable Breakthrough. I like the subtitle, When Your Mountain Doesn't Move, Go Over It. I like the subtitle because when I was writing this book, the Lord really spoke to my heart that in this hour right now, he is going to reveal himself as the unstoppable God. That we are going to see his unstoppable power, his unstoppable miracles, his unstoppable provision, his unstoppable favor on the church. We're going to see God's unstoppable anointing. So um, this whole book, you know, what do you do? How many have ever spoken to a mountain? You know the scripture where Jesus said, speak to the mountain and it will move, right? How many here have ever spoken to something and you didn't really see it move yet? Or you're believing for something or you've been praying for something or, you know, something in your family or something in your kids or something in your life. You've been praying, but you have yet to fully see that full breakthrough. You know, we've, I love the dramatic moves of God, and I thank God for the moments where God comes in, breaks in, and there's just these instant breakthroughs and instant miracles. I thank God for those moments. I've experienced them in my own life. But I'll tell you what, I've also experienced where sometimes breakthrough has not just been in a moment, but it's been a process. And sometimes you can't, you know, the enemy would love to try to discourage you when it looks like your breakthrough's not happening. But what we have to understand is sometimes God brings breakthrough in different ways. But I will tell you what, he always does bring the breakthrough. And this book, I encourage you to get it. This book uh, really goes into, okay, yes, believe God for those dramatic instant breakthroughs. But when that does not happen like that, how do you still walk out the breakthrough in every area of your life? So this will give you a lot of keys for that. And I think really help you in your journey. Then we got some music CDs out there. This is good for just worship and prayer. We have one called Awakening and another called Healing in His Wings. These are instrumental uh, music with scriptures and prayers and then uh, impartation prayers and, and scripture readings and, and worship and music. So it kind of combines all that together and it's great for just playing in your house. If you play it, play it in your car, I don't take uh, responsibility for what happens if you listen to this in your car. Because the glory may fill your car and then, you know, that's between you and God. And then, <laughs> and then we've got some great teaching resources. This one is called Shift Your Atmosphere and Transform Your Life. You know, one of the things I really believe about the church is that we are not called just to gauge the spiritual atmosphere. We're called to shift the atmosphere. 
We're called not just to feel the atmosphere, but to change the atmosphere. That we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We carry the atmosphere of heaven in our lives as believers. And we're anointed by God to shift the atmospheres around us. And what I mean by atmosphere is like the spiritual realm. What is happening in the spiritual dynamic around your life and even in our nation. So um, that's a great teaching series. And then this one is a video course we put together. It's called, Are You a Feeler? It's Mentoring and Discerning of Spirits. So this course was is really one of my life messages because um, the first gift God gave me a spiritual gift as a teenager was the discerning of spirits and the spirit world became very real to me I started feeling everything and didn't always know how to navigate that um, but the Lord taught me he taught me how to live from the glory of God he taught me how to be so insulated in him that no matter what I discern in the spiritual realm I'm over it and not under it because when you're a feeler, I call it a feeler, when you're sensitive in the, to the atmosphere of the spirit, sometimes you can come under unnecessary spiritual warfare because you're aware of things, you're feeling things. So how do you um, really insulate yourself in the glory, in the presence of God so that you can clearly discern in the spirit but not come under those things, but you're ruling over those things. So that's what this course is all about. It has helped so many people uh, navigate their discernment and understand their discernment understand what are they feeling and what are they experiencing and and how to really operate in that gift in a very life-giving way so you're not always under a feeling of oppression God does not want you living under oppression God wants you living totally free where the enemy's underneath you hallelujah so that's a great course and I encourage you to get it so if you have your Bibles turn over to Matthew chapter 21 this is Palm Sunday so prophetically I want to launch off of Matthew 21 and see where the Holy Spirit takes us here how many just love the dynamic of the Holy Spirit you know that he just moves and sometimes you just got to put up your sails and catch the wind of the Holy Spirit you got to just catch where he's moving in your life and moving in in, even in our, our gatherings like this. Matthew chapter 21, you know, years ago I was in Israel. How many have ever been to Israel? So you know when I say it's, uh, it's a, it's a life-changing experience to walk where Jesus walked and to see what he saw. And I remember there we were, you know, where Jesus made his great triumphal entry. And we had a gathering, we had a service. And I remember... Uh, going to Matthew chapter 21 and just reading through this account, this historical account of Jesus making his triumphal entry. And this is, you know, even what we celebrate on this Sunday. So, uh, but I have a prophetic word from it for you today. Matthew 21 verse 1, it says, And when they came near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples on ahead, saying to them, Go into the village that is opposite you, and at once you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall reply, the Lord needs them, or the Lord has need of them, and he will let them go without delay, or he will let them go immediately. So one of the things that God has spoken to my heart for many, for many in the church in this hour, God is breaking a spirit of delay off of people's lives. God is breaking delay off of people and he is bringing his promises into a place of harvest and a place of manifestation. So the first thing I want to say over you today, and I want to declare it in the spirit, that anything that has been trying to hold up the breakthrough power of God in your life, we declare today that that delay is breaking in Jesus' name. We declare any promise of God that God has spoken over you, anything that's been trying to hold it up or hold it back, the power of God is coming to break that delay off of your life and off of your family. In the name of Jesus. Delay is breaking. Everyone say it today. Delay is breaking. Delay is breaking. So... Here, I want you to look at this with me. Here, Jesus is getting ready for his triumphal entry into the city. 
And he says to his disciples, go and get that donkey. I have need of that donkey. And if they say anything to you, say the Lord has need of that donkey. And when you speak those words, they will let that donkey go. They will loose that donkey without delay. And we know this is exactly what happened. They went, they got the donkey, the donkey was loose, delay was broken. Now, I'm sure that donkey was probably sitting around for a while, tied up, waiting. Waiting for its purpose, waiting for something to happen in its life, waiting. And there it was, waiting, waiting, waiting. Have you ever felt like that? Like you're waiting, waiting, just waiting for something to change, waiting for God to do something, waiting for something to happen in your life. And here that donkey was waiting. And when the word of Jesus came over that donkey, that donkey was loose. The delay was broken. So when the word of God comes over you, I'm going to tell you what happens with that anointed word. When the anointed word of God comes over your life, delay is broken. Oh, hallelujah. And another, another thing, I love this. I love this. Jesus said, I have need of that donkey. I have need of that donkey. Now, we could say, well, Jesus is God. God doesn't need anything. God's all powerful. God has no need. But can I tell you something in God's design? I know God is omnipotent. I know he's omnipresent. I know he is all powerful. He is sovereign. He can do anything he wants, anytime he wants to do it. And I know that in that sense, he doesn't need anything. He is self-sufficient. He, is, he exists all on his own. In fact, he is the only being in that, we, that, that is in creation and beyond creation that exists all on his own. He was not created. He always was, always is, always will be. So in that sense, I understand God does not need anything. But in his design... He chose to partner with you and with me. He chose. And it's throughout all of Scripture. It's throughout all of Scripture. The disciples went and preached, and God worked with them, performing signs and miracles. The disciples walked, they preached, and God worked with them. There was a partnership. Even think of how salvation came to mankind. Jesus could have come the first time through the clouds like he's going to come the second time. He could have just come right down and said, here I am. I'm the savior of the world. Believe in me. But instead, God in his design chose to partner with his creation. Chose Mary to come through as a baby. Partnered with his creation to bring salvation to his creation. Even salvation took place through partnership with mankind. I mean, God could have saved us all on his own, come right from the sky. But no, he partnered with us. Jesus was born, bringing salvation to us. Even salvation came through partnership between God and man. And we see this in the scripture. Believers will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. There's even that partnership in divine healing where, where our hands are anointed by God and we put them on a sick person and God will heal them. Even healing comes with partnership. So when Jesus said, I need that donkey, there was a purpose for that donkey. Jesus needed that donkey for, for an ultimate purpose. God says the same thing over us. When he looks at you, he says, I have need of you. When God looks at you today, he says, I need you. And you may say, well, God, you're God. You don't need me. But yes, in his plan, he wants to partner with you because there is something in his heart that he wants to bring into the world and he will partner with you to bring it forth. And it gives us, it gives us a great sense of purpose and a great sense of fulfillment to understand that God does, even before he formed us, had good works prepared for us to do. That he's got a plan and a purpose for your life even before you were born. Things, good works that he anointed you to do, 
that he wants to partner with you to see happen in the earth. So your life is filled with a lot of purpose. You're not just waking up on Monday morning, trying to survive your day, trying to survive your week, just getting through life. No, you're, you're, God has not made you just to survive your life. He has made you to arise and shine and to thrive in your life and to live with purpose and to live with vision and to live with a sense of God's calling on you that there is something unique he wants to partner with you in to release into the world. There are specific people God will have your life touch and reach. Hallelujah. So when the word came over that donkey... And Jesus said, I have need of that donkey. That donkey was loosed from what was holding it up. You see, and when the word of God comes over you and God calls you by name, because you are called and chosen by name, God has called you by name. When he calls you by name, you know what he says over you? He says, I need you. There's something I want to do in you and through you. And because God needs you, the next thing is, he's going to make sure that you are loose from everything that the enemy would try to hold you up with or bind you up with. Because so God says there's a greater purpose, there's a greater plan for your life. And because I need you, I'm going to make sure that anything the enemy has ever tried to bind you with is going to be broken so that you are free to be who God has destined you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says? If two or more agree, it shall be established. You see, there's power in agreement, but it works in the negative direction too. If the enemy can get you to come into agreement with what he's doing, he can try to bind you up in some area of your thinking, some area of your belief system, some area of your heart, some area of your soul. But the moment you come to know the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When you know the truth, number one, of who God is, what he has done, what Jesus has accomplished for you, what, what he, who, who Jesus says you are, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that you are called, that you are chosen, that there's a destiny for you, that you are holy, that you are set apart, and you begin to understand what God says about you. Then you refuse to come into agreement with anything the enemy says. And the moment you break agreement with the enemy, his power is destroyed. He's got no place in your thinking, no place in your soul, no place in your life. No place at all. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you what, that's the best way to kick the enemy out of your life. Just refuse to come into agreement with anything he says and anything he does. Refuse to agree with it. And if you refuse to agree with it, it breaks his power and he's got no place. He only has place where you let him, where you agree with him. But when you break that agreement, it's broken. And you agree with God. You agree with his word, his truth, what he says over you. That gets established in your life. Oh, praise God. The first scripture I memorized. The very first scripture I memorized. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have been praying that scripture for 30 years. And I tell you what, the more you pray the word, think the word, read the word, get the word in you, the more your mind is transformed to really believe the word and faith comes alive in you and then you live the word. It becomes a part of who you are. Oh, praise God. It becomes a part of the very person you are on the inside. So Jesus said, I have need of that donkey. And the delay was broken. So God is speaking over you today. For this day. For this season. For this hour. I've got need of you. Therefore anything that's trying to hold you up. It's got to break in Jesus name. It has got to go. It has got to break in Jesus name. And there. I'm sure that day. That day of the triumphal entry. There the donkey comes, Jesus places the garment over the donkey, sits on top of the donkey and rides into. And I mean, there's so much in this scripture that we could pull out today. There is so much. I'm not going to go into all of it. But even the fact that Jesus chose to, rise in, to, to ride in on a donkey 
when he could have on a horse, but he chose humility. And he showed us when that garment was placed over that donkey, that's like a, a mantling. There, there was a mantling of this, of this animal of humility. And it's like, I believe it was showing the heart of God that what he mantles, he doesn't mantle pride, he mantles humility. And as we have that humility in our hearts, Jesus will mantle us with his power. So here Jesus rode in on the donkey. The whole city went into an uproar. The whole city. And that, I tell you what, that was the best day in that donkey's life. I mean, think about it. Here they are. Hosanna, raving palm branches. Having a celebration, putting the palms on the ground. That donkey was like, oh, they like me. I mean, I could just see, Pastor Doug, I could see that donkey. Oh, this, this is a good day. Oh, look, I don't even have to walk on the dirt. They're putting palm branches down on the ground for me. They give me the royal treatment. This is great. <laughs> but can I give you a little insight? All of the celebration had nothing to do with the donkey. It was about who was on the donkey. Okay, it was about who was on the donkey. <laughs> and sometimes when God mantles you, and God puts his presence on you, and God puts his anointing on you, that anointing can make you look better than you really are. God has a way of when his glory is on you, his presence is on you. It just covers, it just covers a whole lot. And, and I mean, you, you know, you shine with Jesus, but God's glory can make you look even better than you really, really are. So I've learned that when God puts an anointing on you or God puts his presence on you, it's not about you. It's about who you're carrying. And when Jesus went into the city that day, an uproar happened. And I believe God wants to do that again today. God wants to send whole cities into divine uproar. God wants to move in regions and territories where Jesus is seen and Jesus is made manifest. And the whole place, you know, everyone's getting saved and healed and God's moving. Oh, hallelujah. So here... <laughs> The city goes into an uproar and the donkey was probably feeling pretty good. But we have to remember, the donkey was just a donkey. It was about who was on the donkey. And for you and for me, you came to church on Palm Sunday to hear something. You are just a donkey. <laughs> Praise God. But you are an anointed donkey. Hallelujah. <laughs> you are an anointed donkey. But here's the thing. You carry Jesus on your life. You carry the presence of God on your life. Just like that donkey carried Jesus. We carry Jesus. And there will be times when God moves on you and through you that, that the glory may make you look better than you are. But we always have to remember we are just the donkey. And it's not about us. It has never been about us. It's about who we carry. But I believe that God wants us carrying Jesus everywhere we go. Not just in church on Sunday morning. We come to church, we look good, we're worshiping God. It's a positive, faith-filled, loving atmosphere. And then we go out. But that's when God wants us carrying Jesus. When we go outside of our celebrations and we go outside of our gatherings, then we realize Jesus doesn't stay in the church. He goes with us. And we carry him with us everywhere we go. We carry Jesus. And I believe we so much carry Jesus that God wants to shock people with his love, with his presence. Not just in a spirit-filled church meeting, but even outside. When you're just being you, realize this. Even when you're just being you, you're carrying Jesus. He's in you. He wants to be seen through you. He wants to shine through you. He wants to shock people through you. Jehovah Shaka. I didn't learn that name of God in Bible school, but I made it up myself. Jehovah Shaka, I am the Lord who shocks you. I'm the Lord who surprises you with, his, with goodness and love and breakthrough. <laughs> Praise God. I'll never forget. 
You know, guys, we really do carry Jesus on us and in us. We do. And I'll never forget, you know, in my life, the last 20 years I've lived in airports, hotels, and traveled all around the country and world. Now that I'm married, seven years married with my wife and two babies, I travel less, um, you know, on purpose because I don't want to just leave my family at home. I want to make them front and center in my life. But uh, I've, I've been a lot of places, and I remember going through an airport once. I was checking in to get on a plane, and I just walked up to the ticket counter to get my ticket to get on the plane. And all, you know, I'm, I was not in that moment praying in the spirit. I wasn't doing anything outward. I was just being myself. And I walk up to that ticket counter, and the lady, the sweet airline lady behind the ticket counter I just walk up to the ticket counter and she goes like this whoa she kind of did a little back bend and went whoa and then she goes oh and she leans over the counter and looks at me and she says you are so nice I mean I literally just walked up to the counter you are so kind you are so loving I love you and I just kind of stood there like Okay, love you too. And she was beside herself. I didn't know what was happening with her. She was like fumbling the tickets and the luggage tags. And I walk away and she's yelling out after me, I love you, I love you. This was in New York City Airport. And I'm like, I love you too. And everyone's looking at us. And I'm like, God, what is going on? What is happening with this lady, God? And I'm just walking away. And then Holy Spirit speaks to me. He says, when you walked up to that ticket counter, my presence walked up with you. And what was happening with this lady is my tangible love came over her and all she could feel was my love. So she kept saying, I love you, I love you, I love you because she was overcome by the love of God. So church, what I say is let's get so full of Jesus, let's get so full of the Holy Spirit that we just shock people with his love everywhere we go. We shock them with the presence of God. That people see Jesus. They see the real Jesus. So here, delay is broken. Jesus comes in on his great triumphal entry. And the scripture I want to speak over you here is 2 Corinthians 6 2. 2 Corinthians 6 2. For he says, in a favorable time, I listen to you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time of favor. Everyone say now. Now, now is the time of favor. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the favorable time. I really believe we are living in a season where God is going to be releasing so much divine favor on the church. Divine favor. Now is the favorable time. Now is a time of salvation. Where God is going to release divine favor upon us. And part of that favor will be, I believe, a very prophetic scripture for this year. Isaiah 22, 22. Isaiah 22, 22. It says, I will set on his shoulder the key of the house of David. And when he opens, no one will shut. And when he shuts, no one will open. This is a season, and I want you to prepare your heart for it, where God is going to be opening strategic doors for the body of Christ. God is going to be opening strategic doors in your life. And it's echoed in the book of Revelation 3.7. Revelation 3.7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of the one who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. And I really believe we are in a season of the divine open door. Where God is going to open the right door for your life. And part of God opening up the right door is also shutting the wrong door. Because part of walking in the divine grace of God and walking in the divine will and plan of God is that when he says a door is going to open for you, no devil, no person, no circumstance can shut that door. 
You got to understand this. When God says, I'm opening up a door, nothing the enemy can do will shut that door. Because he's God. But he also says, when I shut a door, no man's going to open it. So there are times God will shut a door that no man can open. But in your life, sometimes when a door shuts, we can get discouraged. We can feel like, oh, this door shut. I wanted this door to be open. But can I tell you something? God knows better than each one of us. And we don't always see beyond that door. And it could be that God let a door close in your life because he was either sparing you from something you didn't see on the other side. Or that door would have led down a path that was not God's will for your life. So he will shut that door and open up the right door to keep you going in the right direction. I've learned this. When you submit your life to God, I tell you, when you really submit your heart and your will, like Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done, you submit your heart and will to God, God will make sure he shuts the wrong doors and opens up the right doors so that you go in the right direction. So you don't have to mourn shut doors. You can thank God for the shut doors. Just like you thank him for the open doors. I remember when me and Stephanie were being led by God to relocate from New York down south a little bit to North Carolina. So I grew up in New York, lived there my whole life. And four years ago now, we relocated to Charlotte, North Carolina. But I remember when that shift of season started to happen in my life. And I could feel grace on me shifting and changing. And I knew God was doing something, but I needed to feel it out. So... I said to my wife, Stephanie, let's, let's fly down to North Carolina. Let's rent a car and just drive and pray. Because, you know, if I'm going to live there, I need, to, I need to feel it out. I need to drive around. I need to pray. I need to see what I sense from God. So we're driving. All, we're just driving three, four days. Got in a car and just drove and prayed. All through different neighborhoods. Just drove and prayed. And as we were praying, we drove into this neighborhood. And when we drove into this neighborhood, I'm telling you what happened to me. My heart physically went on fire inside my chest. And the presence of God filled our car. And I said, this is it. This is our neighborhood. This is where we're going to have kids. This is where the next season of our life is going to be. I knew it. So we looked around the neighborhood. We found a house for sale. I said, okay, here's our house. That day, we put an offer in on it. Now listen, this house was sitting there for three months. No one was buying it. And I said, surely God is keeping this house for us. So I said, let's put an offer on it. We put it on. As my realtor put the offer in, literally the same time, the same minute we were putting the offer in, someone else signed a contract and bought it right out from underneath us while it was sitting there for three months. And I said, God, that was my house. And I'm not going to lie, I was discouraged. There was no other houses for sale in that, in that neighborhood. And I said, God, I thought this was it. I know you spoke to me, God. And it was like the house was taken right out from underneath us. And when that door shut, I was discouraged because I couldn't see beyond the moment. We flew home. I kept praying. I kept talking to God. Okay, God, I kept looking in that neighborhood. Another house came up for sale. I was down there the next day. We put an offer in and we got that one. But here's the testimony. Here's the testimony for our family, for our children, the backyard, all of it. It was a better house for us than the first one. It was more suited for our kids, more suited for our family. It was better. So when at first I was crying over the closed door, now I was thanking God that the first door shut. I was like, thank you, God, that that house sold out from underneath us. Thank you, Jesus. Because you had a better one. And that's what God will do for you. Whenever a door shuts, I'm going to tell you right now, whenever a door shuts, it's because God has a better door for you. He's got a better door for you. So you don't even have to waste time getting discouraged and getting upset. You just have to see beyond that door and realize God has a better door for you. That God's favor is on you as his child. His grace is on you. I believe this goes for relationships. It goes for job opportunities. It goes for every, every part of our lives. Every part of our lives. That's why I always encourage young people, really submit your heart and life to God. Because he will direct your steps and bless your life. And you'll have the best 
When you're following God, he will, he will make sure that you walk in the best. Praise God. And here's a hopeful word for everyone else. Let's say you made some mistakes in life. Let's say you made some mistakes. I'll tell you, here's the other part of God. He is a restoring God. And the years that the locust has eaten, he will restore back to you. Okay? So, yes, we tell folks this is the best way. But if you have made mistakes, if you have made bad choices throughout your life, okay. But here's the grace of God. Here's the mercy of God. That even things you lost, God says, I will even restore the years that the locust has eaten. So even if you sit here today and you feel like there are moments of regret in your life or moments of mistake, when you submit those things to God, he says, I will even restore those years that you feel you lost. Maybe years in your childhood or years in your young adult life or even years in your adult life. God says, I am bigger than all of it and I can fully restore it back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I thank God that he's a restoring God. I do. I thank God that he's a restoring God. That even if we miss it, he's like, you know what? I'm going to bring those lost years back to you. You know what I believe? I believe that even if God has to add years onto your life to restore years back to you, he can do that. He could do that. And when he adds years, I pray healthy years. Hell, you know one of the scriptures I speak over myself a lot? Sometimes I'll speak it in the mirror. I'll preach on it. He renews my youth like the eagles. I, I speak that scripture because, you know, sometimes you start getting a little older. And you're like, oh, I'm getting older. I'm getting older. I'm getting older. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I apply the duct tape adorning to my mouth. And I say, nope, if it ain't life, I'm not speaking it. So what I say over myself, God, I thank you. You are renewing my youth like the eagle. I thank you, God, I have an 18-year-old metabolism. I thank you, God, that I'm getting younger and younger. <laughs> that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is quickening my mortal body. I speak these scriptures over myself. He quickens my mortal body. He's renewing my youth. Because I know Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So I'm praying no wrinkles in my spirit and no wrinkles on my face, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many thank God today for what Jesus has done for you? I tell you, you really understand what Jesus has done for you. Faith will come alive in your heart. You realize it's not about you because you'll never be perfect. You can never earn. You can never earn anything from God. It's because of what Jesus has done for you that you're saved, that you're healed, that his promises will be true and amen in your life. It is not because of you. It is all because of him. It's because of him. And the more your heart is full of what Jesus has done for you, the more the faith of God will come alive in you that you will walk in the abundant life that Jesus died to give you. You will walk in it. I thank God that he's a restoring God, that we see lives healed and restored today. I'll share, I'll share one or two other stories. I remember when I was first saved. I was 14 years old. 14 years old. And I won't share the whole story today, but I'll, I'll share some of it. My mom became really sick when, she, when I was 12. She became really sick. So we were Catholic and we believed in God. But for us, we, I didn't yet have a salva like full salvation experience. I believed in God, but for me, God was a force in the universe. He was out there somewhere. I believed in him, but he was really far away. And my mom became really sick. She was on 24 bottles of medicine a day. She was sick. Doctors diagnosed her with all sorts of things. And she went to a Catholic charismatic healing mass where the priests were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they believed in divine healing. Well, it was like, it was very much a mass. It was very quiet. It was not like they didn't have worshiping like this going on. And my mom was so sick, she collapsed on the floor in the back of the church. She couldn't even walk. She just laid on the floor in the back of the church. And by the time she made her way down to the front, she stood up and the priest said, what do you need? And she said, I don't know what I need. 
I need God. I need healing. And, you know, she looked up and she said the simplest prayer. She just said, Jesus, I'm coming to you. That's all she prayed. Jesus, I'm coming to you. Can I tell you, your prayers don't always even have to be long. They just have to be from your heart. Jesus, I'm coming to you. And before the priest could even put his hand on her, the power of the Holy Spirit came over her body, threw her 10 feet through the air, and she felt volts of electricity surging through her body. And by the time God was finished, she was saved, healed, and set free all in one power encounter. I mean, she got the revelation that Jesus is the only way to God. He went from a historical figure to a, 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 a I am alive here and now God. And she was saved, healed, set free. That whole week, my whole family got saved. That's when I got saved. That week, she came through the front door from that healing service to a totally different person. And I said, who are you? And she said, Jesus healed me tonight. And I'm like, what? Jesus healed you tonight? What do you mean Jesus healed you? Jesus healed me tonight. And it was that moment salvation hit my whole family. And we knew. We knew from the very beginning. I mean, we didn't know the Bible yet. We really did not know anything in the Bible. We were brand, brand new. But we knew God was real. Jesus was real and that he heals. And he saves. And he sets free. We just knew it from that very beginning moment. And we saw the restoring power of God in our family. So that same God is here right now to heal, to encounter, to restore, to set free. He is here right now. Right now to touch your life, to touch your children, to touch your family, to touch you. We've seen the most broken healed. We've seen the most broken here. I know there's no case too hard for God. No, there's nothing too hard for God. I remember one of the first girls we saw rescued out of trafficking. For 15 years, I traveled through India. And we did miracle festivals all around India. Great miracle festivals of seeing Hindus and Muslims and Buddhists get saved. And demons come out of people. And miracles happen en masse with crowds of people. And then one day, we were, had finished up our festival. And we were walking through the streets of India. And these little children came up to us on the street. They were like this tall. And I saw these little kids. And I was like, oh, look at these little kids. They're so cute. And I, you know, start talking to them. And then I realized after a few minutes what was happening. That these children were being trafficked. And they were offering themselves to us as foreigners. And I was like, what is this? I had never seen anything like it. The street was full of thousands of people that day. I looked around. I couldn't see who was trafficking these kids. I mean, it was shoulder to shoulder people all around us. But someone was. And I remember that day after that outreach, I said, God, we can't just come and see people saved here. We have to help these kids. And something happened in my heart. I saw it right in front of me. I said, we can't just leave these kids on the street like this. We have to do something, God. So we did. Bought land, built our first home. It was a process. Saw 50 children come in to, the, to our first home. And then from there now, from that beginning place, now we have 290 children rescued out of trafficking. 290 kids. I mean, it's a small drop, honestly. It's a small drop in the 1.8 million children trafficked every single year. It's a drop. But it's something. And we're not stopping until we see more and more and more and more children rescued. We're in four countries, Mexico, India, Thailand, Philippines. We just did an expansion starting in January of this year in Mexico City with two homes in Mexico City. All of these, the homes are registered with the government. The government rescues these kids. The, the law enforcement rescues these kids out of trafficking situations and sends them to our home. All of these children, they, the trauma they've gone through is anything is unlike anything we can imagine. The first, one of the first children we saw in India, she was taken by her kidnappers at eight years old and trafficked out at the age of eight years old to 20 men a day. That was her life, held in a room, trafficked out to 20 men a day at eight years old. And one day she tried to fight back. She tried to resist what they were doing. And as punishment, they broke both of her legs 
And by the time she could get to the hospital, infection had set in and they had to amputate one of her legs. And on the way out of the hospital, her traffickers took her and threw her in the garbage on the side of the hospital and said, you're no longer useful for us to do this, so we're just going to throw you out. And there she would have died. She would have died out there on the street. She just would have died. But one of our pastors, we have a fantastic pastoral network that is a part of our ministry. And one of our pastors found this little girl in the garbage and brought her into our home. And that little girl is, is whole, is healed, and God is working in her life, and her life has changed. Her life is transformed. That is one, but multiply that by 290 kids because every story is just like that, if not worse. And I will tell you what, every year we celebrate God and we celebrate these kids. All the children have gotten saved. They have Bible study every day. They have prayer in the homes every day. They're in education. What we do for them is a full care program. We give them the housing, the education, the medical, the clothing, the food, everything, the counseling that they need to get over what they've been through or to work through what they've been through. And every year we do a big celebration for them, big Christmas celebration. When you look at these kids, they're dressed in beautiful dresses, jewelry, they have toys. It's like they're blessed by God. They have a life now that they, I'm talking such an opposite life now to what they came from. And how amazing is it to see Jesus step into the heart of a child that has only known torture and then all of a sudden they're in an environment of love and they're in an environment of Jesus and in a safe place where they can have a brand new life ahead of them. It's probably been the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my ministry. Between all the travel and all the Holy Spirit meetings, seeing these kids healed and transformed has been the most rewarding thing we have ever seen or been a part of. We're going to pray today, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and touch you today. And I know that even as we are praying here, and God is present here, God is present there in Mexico. He's present in India. He's seeking and saving He's reaching out, but he is using our hands. He is partnering with us. He is looking for someone to partner with who will be his hands, who will be his heart. And there's broken people all around us. But this morning, and I feel it's fitting on this day as we're going into celebrating Jesus' resurrection, that we become God's hands. And we become his heart even in this moment. And when we travel and we minister, you know, we're a faith-based ministry. We never charge anything. It's all by faith. But people are so amazing. And we give people the opportunity to sow into outreaches like this. Because together, we're able to accomplish so much more than just one by one. So we do have offering envelopes. And the ushers are going to bring those down. Um, and I want to invite you today to sow into this. We have launched a new outreach in Mexico City with two homes, 30 beautiful children that are being restored. And we're believing God for the provision for these kids. And you could sow into this today. Um, you know, if you've ever had on your heart to actually sponsor one of these rescued children, you could talk to me at my product table. We've got beautiful sponsors that help sponsor these kids. Um, and we send you their photo, their rescue story, and your sponsorship supports them. Your sponsorship helps them. So, um, but you could sow in this offering if you want an offering envelope. So we'll pass out these offering envelopes. You could give by check, credit card, or cash today. In the offering envelope, if you're writing a check, you can make it out to MSM or Matt Sorger Ministries. You can make your check out to that. Or if you want to give by credit card, you can fill out the credit card information on the envelope, it is secure, and we make sure it stays very secure. Uh, but you can fill your credit card information out on the envelope and fill out, just write really clearly all your information so we could process that correctly. And um, 
Yeah, so we want to just give this moment to God and pray a blessing over this. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you today that, Jesus, we can participate with you and be a part even of what you're doing in the earth today. So, Father, we ask you in, in Jesus' name even to bless this offering, this moment of giving. Lord, bless the giver. Bless those it will impact and let your anointing be upon it today. Let your presence, God, seek and save that which is lost to be found. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you, you hover over moments like this. You brood over moments like this. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, just to overshadow us today. Thank you, Jesus. So what we'll do is we'll stand together. We're going to pray together. And if you would like to sow, there's offering baskets down at the front. As we worship, you can just place your offering in one of these baskets. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, as we are moving into just a time of celebrating your life, your resurrection, I thank you, Jesus, that you are raising the dead today, that you heal the sick today, that you set captives free today. And Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place throughout this whole sanctuary. Holy Spirit, we say, let your presence just move across this sanctuary today, God. Lord, I pray that you would even begin to place your hand upon people in this room. Jesus, just begin to place your hand upon people today. And Lord, even as you place your hand on them, Jesus, I ask for your virtue to flow through them. I ask for your healing even today, God. I ask for your breakthrough today, Jesus. Lord, I pray your anointing would break every yoke. I pray that your anointing, God, would heal and revive and restore today in your mighty presence in your mighty presence God I thank you there's nothing 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 impossible for you and I thank you today God nothing is impossible for you so even now Lord even now let your presence minister life to people Shh. 
show karabashande show karabashe shon darabashe ki yarabate Father, I thank you. You're breaking hopelessness off of someone today. Lord, I thank you that even right now, hopelessness that the enemy has sent against them is breaking in the name of Jesus. I see it right now. God is removing a feeling of just being hopeless, a feeling of discouragement. He's taking it off of you right now. He's lifting that spirit of heaviness off of you. And he's going to replace it with a garment of praise. A garment, a new garment of praise is going to come upon you. Oh, rabashando robo shiki yarabashato robo shiki yarabate. Robo shabake o robo shabate. Ko rabashaba kiba shabate. In the name of Jesus, hopelessness goes, discouragement goes. Robo shaba kiba shabande. Oh, I thank you right now. A spirit of heaviness goes. It flees in the name of Jesus, and it is replaced with the joy, the oil of joy. Father, I thank you that you are given the oil of joy today, the oil of joy, anointing people with the oil of joy in their heart, God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, we thank you today. God, we thank you. Oh, that your anointing comes, your glory comes. Lord, we thank you today that your glory comes in a new way. God, that you arise and you shine you arise and shine. Oh, re be 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 shabarabato, re be 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 shabande. Yeah. Strangely dim in the light of His glory and His grace, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, He's here. He's here. Jesus. Holy Spirit is here. Some of you are going to start to feel the presence of God even as you're worshiping. You're going to start to feel the presence of God wash over you, settle upon you. Lead Him in the light. Of his glory and grace. Hey, hey, hey. Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your presence. Oh, even now. He fills you in a new way. He revives you in a new way. He encounters you in a new way. Oh, He revives you. He's reviving. God is reviving something on the inside of you right now. Oh, He's reviving something on the inside of you right now living wells of his presence are opening living wells of the holy spirit are opening up today Oh, His fire is coming, even in a new way, His fire is coming. The fire of the Holy Spirit is coming in a new way. For the Lord says, you will see my fire and you will know my fire. 
For the Lord says there's even coming a new baptism of my fire upon my people in this hour. For the Lord says I will even be an all-consuming fire to you. Robo shande rebe shiba kabando robo shebe. And the Lord says you will see my glory. Robo shabando rebe shiki abande be. For truly in this hour I will arise and I will shine upon you. Shoraba shabando bo shabate. Holy, holy, holy God. Roboboshe, Roboboshe, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, and even as my fire comes upon you, you will know my freedom, you will know my joy, you will know my liberty. Robo shande bebe shabande. Oh, today is a day of freedom. Today, today is a day of freedom. Today, today is a day of freedom. Shaba ba 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 shato. Today, 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 today. Today, 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 oh, Rabababande, today is a day of the blessing of God. Father, I pray, fill your people, even in a new, fresh way. Fill them, Holy Spirit. Anoint them, Holy Spirit. Anoint Anoint them, Holy Spirit. Holy, 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 holy. Father, I thank you for your presence on my sister today. Your presence upon her today, God. Your anointing upon her today, God. Oh, rabba ba 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 shabake. Rabba ba 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 shiki ya rabba shabate. Oh God, you light a fire. You light a fire, God. Oh, my brother, Lord, just stand right here, my brother. Lord, I thank you that you light a fire. Whoa, you light a fire today. You light a fire today. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's his anointing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Oh, God, you come like an all-consuming fire. You come like an all-consuming fire. Like an all-consuming fire. Jesus. Show, Rod. That's his glory on you, my brother. That's his glory on you. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus.
Lord, we say yes. We receive your fire today. Ha. God, we receive your fire today. Ha. Lord, we receive your fire. Yeah, just tell them. Say, God, I receive your fire today. Oh, we receive you today, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Over my sister, God. Oh, let your glory, let your glory, let your glory fill my sister today, Jesus. Robo Shaba. Oh, that's the fire of God. That's the, that's the fire of God. That's the fire of God. Whoa, that's the fire of God. Whoa. 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 Yeah, he's releasing his anointing right now. He's releasing his anointing right now. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Corra Basha Bando Robo Shabate, Shora Basha Basha Bande Be Kabate Be. Jesus, thank you for my sister today. Jesus. He is a friend. Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. God is your heavenly father. And the father embraces you today. Father God embraces you today. wraps his arms around you and holds you close to his heart and he says you're my daughter you're my daughter and I'm your father you're my child and I love you with a perfect love Whoa. I love you with a perfect love Jesus, I pray today, Lord, fill my sister with the Holy Spirit. Fill her in a fresh way today, not just with the Holy Spirit, but with the love of the Father. I pray that she would know in the depths of her heart the love of her heavenly Father. That even today, God, you would just wrap your arms around her and draw her so close to you. There's a breakthrough God has given you today, even now. There's a breakthrough that God is giving to you. You're going to come forth more and more and more as a daughter of the King. You're going to come forth more and more and more. I just see you emerging in this hour as who God has created you to be. Shoraba Shaba, a 
daughter of the king. Shoka Raba Shaba Shaba Tobo Kobo Shaba Tobo Kobo Shaba Te. And it's like, I just see it's like things are just going to fall away. Things are just going to fall away, and you're going to come into a whole new place with God, a whole new place in who God has called you to be. Shoka Raba Shaba Shaba Te. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit today, God, Lord, just bless this dear woman of God today. Jesus, I pray, be so close, fill with your Holy Spirit and your presence and anointing today, God. And Lord Jesus, I just pray a fresh, fresh touch of your love, a fresh touch of your anointing, a fresh touch of your presence today, God. Whoa, in the name of Jesus, a quickening and an anointing today. A quickening and an anointing. In the name of Jesus, I pray today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 I want to pray for God to quicken the bones. I just feel to pray over this bones and joints in the body, strengthening of bones. Is there anyone here that's been diagnosed with weakening of weak bones or something with the bones? Like a weakening of bones and yeah, because I just feel to pray for that specifically. Is there anyone else in the room with that? Just wave, just give a wave weakening yeah I just want to pray for you right now so Lord right now I pray over the bones specifically weakening in the bones I pray for strength to come into the bones in the name of Jesus I pray for strength in the bones strength in the joints healing in the joint there's healing happening right now in the joints and bones whoa there's healing in joints and bones right now whoa jesus i decree healing and strength in the bones and joints from the top of your head to the soles of your feet and every joint and bone in between we lose resurrection healing in life and right now, I just say be healed and strengthened in that area. Be healed and strengthened in that area right now. Even as my hand is laid upon you, even as my hand is laid upon you, believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I lose resurrection life into the bones in your body. Whoa. Even your bones will be anointed. Even your bones will be anointed. Whoa. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Over here. Who else over here? Because I felt it over here, too, on this side of the room. With the bones. Who else with bones? Just receive it right where you are right, where you are right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I release strength and healing in the bones today, God. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in my brother's body, right now, my brother's body, I declare resurrection life, resurrection healing. Lord, I thank you. You heal his body. You strengthen his body. Even now, by the blood, by the blood of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, whoa, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Whoa, you are healed. Oh. By the stripes of Jesus, 
His anointing right through your body. His anointing right through your body. His anointing right through your body. Yep, even as my hand is upon you, His anointing ministers life and health and healing right through your body. Right now, my sister got, I loose that resurrection, resurrection healing in her body today. Resurrection healing in the bones right now. Right now. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Was there someone else dealing with a bone condition that I didn't pray for? Any other hands that I missed right here, over here? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, right now I just speak healing over my brother's body, healing in his bones. In the name of Jesus, total healing, total healing. Yep. And the ligament, yep. So, Lord, I pray healing in that ligament. Healing in that ligament. Healing in that ligament. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. New knees, God. New knees. God, I pray new knees. Whoa. Quicken the knees and the joints and the knees, God. Oh, come right out here. Come right out here. Come right here. Stand right here. Just go like this a little bit. Lord, I thank you. New knees. Even as my hand is upon her today. By his stripes, new knees. Whoa, by his stripes, new knees. By his stripes, new knees. By his stripes. New knees, whoa, by his stripes, new knees, oh Jesus, show rabba ba 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 shabate. Oh Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, help her, help her, help her. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, just move those knees. Try, try those knees. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How are they feeling? They're feeling better. Yeah, they're feeling better. Do a little walk right here. Do move. You can walk. You do exercises. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you need good knees. How are they feeling? I've been praying for good knees. <laughs> Oh, why? Thank you, Lord. What, how did they feel before? Much better. I, yes, yes, for sure. Yes, yes. Anointed knees. Anointed, anointed knees. Everyone stretch your hands towards our sister today. God, we thank you for anointed, flexible knees with no pain, nothing, God. We just declare right now pain-free knees. Pain-free knees. No wearing away of the knees, only perfect knees. In the name of Jesus, God, you've heard her prayer. You've heard her prayer. Whoa, and Lord, I thank you today. Oh, he's, he, he hasn't just heard your prayer, but he's going to fill you today. Fill you to overflowing. Fill you to overflowing. <laughs> fill you to over, whoa, overflowing. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, she's doing high kicks. Or <laughs> she's doing high kicks. <laughs> she's running. Yeah, you need to do a little run. You need to do a little run. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now, I just see the hand of Jesus going over the heart. 
See, the hand of Jesus going over the heart, healing the heart. Father, right now I speak healing over the physical heart. Healing of the heart, physical and the emotional heart. Both. I see God touching both the physical heart and the emotional heart. I see God healing the heart. Someone you've carried something in your heart for a long time, like a burden. It's like something you've just been carrying in your heart. God's going to release your heart right now from it. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to actually, like a burden is going to lift off of you and you're going to feel lighter. So right now, Lord, every weight and burden lifted off in Jesus' name. A burden and a weight that God did not put on you. Lift it off, God. Whoa, lift it off. Right there. Right there. It's going. It's going. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to breathe lighter. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, bless Dr. Crandall today, God. Lord, we pray a blessing over Dr. Crandall. Uh, Lord, just a fresh strengthening, a fresh infilling of your presence and grace in his life. I thank you for your anointing on his life. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to fill him refresh him anoint him in a mighty mighty way today quicken every part of his heart his mind quicken every part of his body just quicken him God in the name of Jesus oh thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's that's an anointing on you, Dr. Crandall. That's an anointing. Let your anointing, let your anointing rest mightily upon him, God. Mightily upon him, Jesus. Yeah. Father, I pray for each one under the sound of my voice. Lord, let resurrection life work mightily in each one. We loose your resurrection life in families today. We loose resurrection life in marriages today, in children today, in homes today. We lose resurrection life to flow for each one personally today. For each one personally, God. For each one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we're going to be back here tonight at 7. I don't want you to forget that either. You got a double portion for today. Amen. I want you to raise your hands. We want to bless the congregation. Brother Matt will be out at the uh, product table. Father, we just thank you for your moving of the Spirit. We thank you for changed lives for healing, deliverance, setting the captive free. Hallelujah. Which is what the gospel is. In Jesus' name, you're setting us free. We thank you for a change. We thank you for this ministry. Now give us a great service tonight. Lord, we thank you for all the ministries that he's involved with, with these uh, trafficked children. My God, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Yes, the offering for him is down right down here in the offering plates. Yeah, yeah. Have an offering, bring it forward right here. Amen. God bless you. See you tonight. Amen.